Hi, my name is Mike. I hope this video is helpful. I'm sorry that this video is a bit crude as I do not have sophisticated video editing software. I own a 2017 Red Rover with a 750 watt motor operated by a 48 volt controller. I love this bike. I have about 900 miles on it. I get to go farther and longer than when I ride my manually operated bike. I was riding my bike on a trail with only about 800 feet of climb over about nine miles on a beautiful day in the 70s and suddenly I lost drive. The battery showed plenty of charge and my controller display looked fine, but when I used throttle or the pedal assist, I saw no wattage and there was no drive. Here's the spoiler alert. You may be thinking that you have a 750 watt motor. I have suddenly lost power two or three times before when I've climbed long mountain roads that average about 8% grades at about 10 miles an hour, and I'm still using all 750 watts, but I'm pedaling pretty good for me, a 215 pound, 64 year old man. In this situation, the shutdown is caused by an over temp sensor in the motor. After about five or 10 minutes, I can begin operation again. But the power did not return this time. I didn't know why. I did not monitor the wattage because I knew I was not using much throttle. When I got home and got a closer look at the motor, I could smell hot electrical burning. So I started to troubleshoot things. I could not find a schematic for the Red Rover. In fact, I found it hard to find electrical schematics for e-bikes. So I made some simplistic assumptions. I assumed that three pins of the connector go to the coils of the motor. I got out my ohmmeter and essentially measured shorts between any two of the three pins to the motor. Based on 750 watts and 48 volts, I calculated that the coil resistance should be about three ohms. Aha, I need a new motor. Was the controller burnt out too? Again, I don't have a schematic, but I assume that this is a stepper motor controller and probably had some overcurrent protection. I hooked up my voltmeter and measured for both DC and AC voltage between any two pins and turned the throttle, nothing. I would expect that Hall effect sensors in the motor probably are needed to tell the controller to apply power between a winding. But I didn't feel like making a breakout cable so that I could connect the motor and controller together while measuring a signal. I called Red Power and got feedback from a tech. He first suggested that I turn on the bike and immediately after the display comes on, roll the bike backwards while twisting the throttle quickly and gently on and off and see if the motor will apply any power to the wheel. Do you feel any twitching or vibrations? He asked. I did not. I thought perhaps the brake inhibits were activated even though the brakes were fully mechanically off. The red power tech said that I could disconnect the electrical connector to each brake and that would eliminate any faulty switch closures in the brake. Still no power to the motor. So I ordered a new wheel assembly for $350 and a controller for $100. Red power said that I could return whatever was not needed, which I thought was cool. Online, I found motors for $200 to $400. But Rad Power sells the rear wheel assembly, which has the motor already mounted in the wheel, new brake disc, cassette, and even a tire. Just avoiding removing and reconnecting the spokes made this a great deal. I got the new wheel assembly and controller and immediately tested the new wheel assembly and it turned. Yay! So I didn't need the controller. I measured the resistance between any two pins on the new motor and they appear to be shorted, or at least very low resistance. Remember, I expected about 3 ohms. Maybe other electrical devices, like the Hall effect sensors, come into play. So, my problem is solved. Wrong. I opened the motor and it was fried. The insulation on the coils had melted and was slung off the windings onto the hub. Why did this happen? And more importantly, how do I make sure this does not happen again? I talked with Rad Power and they explained that the motor is a 750 watt peak power 500 watt continuously rated motor. I never saw that in the advertising, but it's not an uncommon way to rate motors. That means you can operate at 750 watts for a very short period, but you can operate at 500 watts continuously. Rad Power sent me a write up on hilly rides that explained you should not ride up mountains with more than 15% grade. I completely agree with that. And it was suggested don't go slowly up mountains. That turns out to be very important because at slow speeds, motors become very inefficient and spend more power on heating than on horsepower. 
It was suggested that if I'm riding up the hills, that I should operate using pedal assist PAS 3, which is about a 300 watt limit, or 4, which is about a 500 watt limit. I don't want to hassle rad power because I've had so much fun on this bike. But as an engineer, I would expect the bike to be protected from life limiting operation. We call it idiot proofing. Not being an idiot, I believe the motor was good for 750 watts. Later I thought the overcurrent and overtemp limits should protect the motor. I have read that much more expensive controllers have power controls or temperature controls to prevent this from happening. So I've been doing some research and thinking about solutions. I could lose some weight and lighten the load, but that's why I'm riding the e-bike besides the fun downhill runs. Number two, a blog by Bruce Tickel showed some very good testing work demonstrating that slower speeds generate more heat. So if I ride up the hill faster, then more power could go to torque and less to heating. When I pedal uphill, I pedal in first gear. I could try pedaling in second or third. Maybe I could get more speed by reducing the crank gears so I pedal faster with less torque on the crank arm and wind up going a little bit faster like Chris Froome does in the Tour de France. I could set the pedal assist to three with no throttle. The mountain rides are a continuous climb. I'll try this. Maybe I have to walk once in a while, but for me that would delay the fun ride down the mountain too much and the day would be hotter. But as mountain bikers know, when you're on a trail with steep cliffs, you need to be in control at all times. You do not want to start pedaling and suddenly get two-thirds full power as pedal assisting will do. Next, maybe I have to increase the wattage. But in California, the definition of an e-bike is 750 watts max. Plus I would need a bigger battery, maybe new controller, I might as well get a new bike. Number five, when you look at the design of the most e-bike motors and think about heat shedding, they don't seem to address that very well. First you have a rotor that contains the coils. How do they get rid of the heat? There is some conduction to the axle and poor convection to the stator and thus to the hub. So some people inject more grease or automatic transmission fluid or a ferrofluid fluid like stator aid. The stator aid website offers some excellent data to support possible thermal management improvement by conducting more heat from the rotor to the stator to the hub. But on the Rad Rover, you'd either have to open the motor or drill a hole in the side of the motor case, being careful not to hit anything vital or let metal flakes in. This probably voids the warranty, but I have included a photo that can give you an idea where to drill. Just be sure to drill such that the metal chips fall away from the motor. Number six. One obvious thing to me is the hub design. There is very little surface area in relation to the thermal mass and amount of power to dissipate. Usually something this powerful in electronics has a heat sink. I looked online and only found hub sink that make e-bike motor heat sinks. Go to the website and you'll find some very good data showing the likely improvement. But it appears that the heat sinks that they provide are sized for larger, higher wattage motors that are about eight and three quarter inches in diameter instead of the little over five inch diameter hubs on the Rad Rover. So I'm going to try making my own heat sinks. Mine will be made using annealed copper sheet that I can bend, cut, and solder. Uh, this may help, and here's a concept drawing. Anyway, I hope this is a little helpful. I don't believe this is a Rad Rover problem per se. I believe all e-motors are plagued as I've seen very few motors with heat sinks. Bikes costing more than double have controllers that can better manage the heat problem, but generally by limiting power. I hope that future Rad Rover improvements can include a modified motor with ferrofluid and heat sinks. Anyway, happy riding.